Hey guys, Garage here. And to my left, I have this Pecron E600 LFP power station. I didn't pay for this. Full disclosure, that will in no way ever skew my reviews. If this thing is junk, I'm going to tell you. If this thing can't meet its specifications, I'm going to tell you. I promise it. Um, Pecron sent this out to me. We had a little bit of an email conversation. They sent it out. They held up their end of the deal. Pecron, I owe you an apology. I did not get this video done in the time frame that I promised you that I would. Um, legitimate reasons, guys. Uh, you, you've actually noticed I haven't been on my channel for, for probably over a month and a half or something like that. I got some kind of a sickness and it was bad and I'm not going to go long winded on that, but long story short, I ended up all the way into oncology. They thought it might be some type of a cancer. It kicked my arse so bad. I mean, it's all I could do is get up, function a little bit, go back to bed, function, go back to bed. Um, doctors don't know what it was, still don't know what it was. They're thinking it may be some kind of a virus that I got, but they couldn't find it. It was so weird. I had symptoms of infection, swollen, ah, anyways, all that medical crap no one wants to hear about. It was bad, but garage is back. I'm feeling really, really good. Um, super excited to review this little power station, get back at this fun stuff that I love doing. And we're going to be, uh, tearing this thing down. We're going to be doing a dyno. We're going to see how, how well it actually can perform. I've seen reviews on Amazon. I was looking through the specifications on this little guy and one, the, the price of this thing coming in at the time of this review, like sub $300 is an amazing price point for a 600 watt hour power station, lithium iron power station, phosphate batteries. Um, and a 1200 watt inverter. And one thing that caught my eye in, in those reviews is people were powering equipment that they probably shouldn't be powering with this little inverter. I mean, stuff that, that would be drawing normally a little bit north of 1200 watts. So it makes me wonder, is this inverter actually underrated? Did they actually do the right thing and, and make something that actually can produce far more than what the specifications say? And I love it when companies do that, but we're gonna put that to the test because I don't believe it until I see it. So anyways, we're going to be doing the dyno, um, probably already set it, tear it down, do the normal stuff. We're going to check out the build quality and we're going to go through the features and that that's going to be this video and let's knock this out because I'm excited to get to this. So let's get it on. So what all comes with this power station? Let's take a look. So we have an MC4 adapter with their style connector. It's like an avionics style connector on it. Uh, that works just fine. We have a cigarette lighter to barrel style connector adapter for charging. We have our power brick. We have our extended warranty. So if you register this product and give them your information, you get an extra 12 months of warranty on it. And then we also have um, a user manual. That is everything that comes in the box with this little Pecron E600 LFP. So let's talk about the features of this power station. You have a wireless phone charger on top for phones that support it, makes life easy. You've got a very nice LCD display panel, which shows you all the parameters that are going on with the power station in real time. You have a DC car charger input, so your cigarette lighter can plug directly into this unit and it can charge it at 100 watts. You have a very, very nice 95 volt supported solar charging input that can charge the unit at up to 300 watts if your panels can supply it. That is awesome. You've got three 120 volt outputs. You've got two buttons that can turn AC output on independently or DC out on independently. You have a 12 volt cigarette lighter style um, output as well as two barrel connectors on output for 12 volt DC out. You have a 100 watt USB-C an 18 watt USB-C and two standard USBs rated at 18 watts a piece. You got a nice carrying handle on this thing and overall fit and finish looks excellent. And last but not least, the unit has 614 watt hours of capacity. That's about 24 amp hours. Uh, the battery is 24 volt rated internally and uh, we're gonna get on to testing that. All right, so we're gonna dyno this little E600 LFP from Pecron. Now the inverter on this unit is rated at 1200 watts. Let's see if it actually can meet its specification. I hope it can. So what we're gonna look at right here, this is our wattage. Now we're drawing 7.2-ish watts, and that's because I have a Variac hooked up to this along with a resistive load. So that's how I adjust my loads. So that's just the idle draw right now. We're gonna watch our total harmonic distortion on this fluke. We're at 1% total harmonic distortion idle. 
We can see our waveform here, completely clean on the waveform. And we have our FFT up top. So if anything down low starts looking really ugly noise-wise, we'll see lots of little pins and needles up in this range. So uh, we're going to go ahead and turn on our resistive load. This is going to jump up wattage-wise actually pretty fast right in this range. But let's see how she looks. So turning the load on now. All right, passing 500 watts already. We're at 1.7% THD, 600 watts, 2%, 700 watts, 2.1, still climbing, 800 watts, 2.6%, anything under 5%, completely acceptable. We already passed 1,000 watts at 3% total harmonic distortion. Okay, slowly creeping up still. Waveform looks really, really good. Not seeing any noise or any issues. We are at 1.2 thousand watts at 3.4% THD. We are well past the trading now. We're 50 watts over. And climbing still 3.5%. Waveform still looks really, really good. 1.3, we're 100 watts over rating. This is spectacular. Fans haven't even kicked on on this little, little Pecron unit. We're at 3.7%. I hear some fans starting to kick on on the little unit there. 1.37. We're 170 watts over its rating. The fans are just starting to ramp up. Slowly increasing a little bit. We have not hit overload. We're now at 200 watts over its rating. Almost, almost. 1.39. We are showing 1481 on the output on that, which tells me, yeah, yeah, the meter is pretty darn close. 1.40. Wow, we are really hammering this thing. So I got 1.4 even. I can hear the fans ramping up now, quite a bit more. Temperature's building. Three point nine percent. Now I'm not pushing this unit any further. I did a test just before this to make sure I'm not going to blow anything up on this unit because I would. <laughs> Stress testing is never good for equipment when you push it like this. So I wanted to see exactly what it could do. And that's pretty much where I settled to 1.4. I went slightly over 1. And I did trip an overload earlier. But what I wanted to do for you guys is we're at 1.4 right now. I wanted to see how long it could hold on to 1.4. 1,000 watt output. Um, basically 1,400 watts of output. 200 watts over a trading. Still see no issues on waveform here. Total harmonic distortion is 3.9%, which is excellent. 118 volts. It's holding its voltage. It's not sagging. Oh, we dropped a little bit there, 1.39. Back to 1.4. This is why in the reviews I hear people all the time about running equipment. They really shouldn't be running on this toasters, you know, things like that, microwaves. At 1200 watts, that's kind of dicey. And this thing is absolutely kicking ass over its rating, which very, very, very impressive for a unit at this price point. I mean, at the time of this review, we're talking sub $300. And we are absolutely rocking. I had to dim the lights down. That display is actually reasonably bright, but I did have to dim them down in the room so we could see my meters over here. All right, so I mean, it's holding just fine at 1.4. I'm gonna kick it up just a tick on the Variac, just a tiny bit. Let's see what happens. Actually, I'll get more of this on the screen. See if we go just over, see if it jumps into protect again. See if I can capture all of this. 1.41. 
slowly bring up. Up oh, there we go. And she's out. Protect. 1.41. So 1.4, you're good. 1.41, you're not good. So there we have it. That is our dino run for this little inverter. That was quite amazing. I'm going to let the fans go ahead and cool the unit down before I power it off. I've got this thing all torn down, guys, and I gotta say, this was an absolute pleasure to tear down and take a look at. I don't kind of praise product and sit back and be like, wow, somebody gave a damn when they assembled this very often, but somebody gave a damn. They, Whoever you've got assembling this, give them a raise because they cared, and this is so impressive for a production unit. Like, like I said, most people just don't care, but let's go through some of what I'm talking about. All right, so we've got this heat spreader plate, which stuck to my, my uh, ESD mat. Heat spreader plate with thermal paste on it that actually bolts right over the top on these two heat sinks. So it bolts on top of there. So if we were kind of to mock that up, see if I can do this one-handed. It sat on there, something like, yay. There we go. Getting thermal paste all over me again. Um, sat on there like this. The charging board, which is here was then very nicely secured to that, okay? Every little screw has a fiber washer underneath it. No one does that anymore. I was like, wow. We can see the silicone pads here. So those are some cooling pads for some of these uh, components here. We got another silicone pad here, just thermal transfer pad. I'm not gonna go into the what all that is because actually I'm not gonna spend the time to look at it all. But those little details are amazing. Now let's get, in, get into even more of the details that matter. Every connector in this unit has been has a little bit of adhesive on it, like right here, to prevent it from vibrating and backing out over time. So this thing is built to be rugged. I had to really pull to get these little XT30s off because they have that little rubbery glue on there that holds them in. I like that. You see down in here, Again, somebody freaking cared, and I'm so thankful they did. Every capacitor has a, it's not really silicone, it's a little bit harder than silicone, but it's a type of adhesive to where they're spacing it off the heat sink, so they're not allowing it to touch the heat sink. That is amazing, and all the capacitors down here have that. I mean, look at this guy. He's trying to freaking weld. It looks like a bead. That is amazing. Adhesive in all the right spots to prevent damage from vibration. 90 amp of fuse down in there. Those are on, um, I've seen some cheap inverters uh, that we've had through here where the fuses are soldered directly to the board. These are actually in two spade sockets. So they're actually um, replaceable, easily replaceable. So you got fuses there. Power connections look good. It's equivalent of a lock washer, that little square piece on top. Pretty much what it is. As I mentioned, <laughs> Pecron, whoever is doing your assembly, give them that raise. I don't praise things very often. This was assembled nicely, properly, and they gave a damn. That is amazing. Um, so let me just show you these few other little details before I wrap this up. We have our fuses, our 30 amp fuses down in there. I'm going to put our, our board back in here or our heat spreader, I should say. Um, got it backwards. Give me a second. Then that's all one-handed. Let me set this guy down. There we go. Put our countersunk screws hardware right back in here because it's very low profile and countersunk. So let's put this charging board back over the top just for a second because I wanted you guys to see this too. I spotted 
four more fuses. So something ever went wrong on this charging board. I would check here first. You got two fuses right here and here, F1, F2. And you got two more down here, F3, F4. Actually, is that F4? Yeah, F4, F5. We may have another one hiding. Oh, there it is. Um, we do have some more. We got fuses all over this board. There's one there and one there. And, oh, another one hiding. We got one there. The board is conformally coated in the right spots. Um, prevent water damage, moisture. Again, they've got that adhesive around the chokes, around the caps for vibration resistance up top. And uh, you can see that adhesive on all the, it's like a thread locker, but it's just like a glue um, on all the connectors, locking everything in place. All right, so enough of me blabbing and yapping. Uh, Pecron, good job on this. I don't praise very many companies when it comes to build quality, but this was a breath of fresh air. I'm going to now reassemble it as nicely as you guys had put it together. So, bravo. So, what did you guys think of this Pecron Power Station review? What do you guys think of the build quality? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. So, um, I took a few days to collect my thoughts, and in those few days, I got a sunburn. I am cherry red right now and hurting a little bit because I'm the color of paper, and that happens. I like this power station. I did not find fault in it. I tried to find fault in it. For its size and capacity, what's there not to like? It's well-built. I don't have an app or anything I have to deal with. I just turn it on and it works. Now, a more complex power station, larger capacity, sure, all the gizmos, bells, and whistles. Um, I like that kind of thing. I, it's uh, some things I have very specific use cases for. This size power station, none of that applies. I want to grab it, take it somewhere, and have power. I want to power a laptop in the field. I want to charge it. I want to charge batteries. I want to, maybe if I go tent camping or something, this is a perfect companion to it. I can bring a small portable solar panel, plug it in, and I am good to go for the weekend because um, it's very easy to keep it all charged up if your power requirements are low. The inverter blew my freaking mind. This thing way blew past its 1200 watt rating at 1400 watts. That is wild. No wonder people are powering stuff with this that they shouldn't be because it's freaking kind of beastly for, for and overbuilt for what it is and what it's rated at. Um, a pro and a con. Some people love an external power brick. Some people hate an external power brick. I'm in the camp of liking it for AC charging because they didn't have to build it into the product and you don't have all that extra weight and size added to the product because I'm going to charge this up and take it somewhere else. And if I need to charge it somewhere else, it's going to be with a portable solar panel. So that's a huge pro to me, maybe a con to you. Um, I have read a lot of reviews online that Pecron Products has a lot of radio frequency interference. And nothing that I did... Uh, did I ever encounter any problems with radio frequency interference of both DC and AC on? So not a single thing was uh, ever noticed. And um, I charged laptops. I charged audio equipment, little speakers and things like that. I charged, it didn't skip a beat basically with anything noisy. I didn't hear anything noisy, but of course I wasn't using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi devices right next to it other than a laptop. And in those cases, at least on the Wi-Fi side, didn't make any difference at all. But I know some ham radio guys and other people have complained about Pecron products being quite noisy if I think it's if the uh, DC side and the AC is on at the same time. That could be a symptom of the wireless charger on top. You guys really felt froggy on that and uh, froggy, I, I don't even know what I'm saying. Um, if you guys wanted to and your warranty was void or something or passed or whatever, you might want to charge or unplug the wireless charger and see if that helps that RFI uh, noise issue. Maybe it would, maybe it won't. That's my guess of where it's coming from. I could be wrong. So that is it for my review. Uh, guys, check out Pecron. Um, again, I know they gave me this product. If I bought this product, I would be happy with it right now. There's nothing to complain about. It works. So I recommend them. If you're looking for a power station in this size and uh, capacity, give them your sincere attention. And I will catch you guys later. Peace out.